Greetings, this is Father Michael with our Word of the Week. This week's word is Apocalypse. That's it. Apocalypse. Now, the end of the world is a perennial source of both fear and fascination. On the one hand, it's a source of trepidation. It can be frightening to imagine the end of our life or even just kind of the end of our plans or the end of a relationship. But at the same time, the end of things, particularly the end of the world, has been the source of much fascination, of curiosity. I can't think of the art-inspired television, movies, uh, artistic representations of the end of the world, which are so famous. Now, when we talk about apocalypse, apocalypse, we usually think of the end of the world. I mean, movies and, and artists talk about apocalypse. But apocalypse, the word itself, has nothing to do with the end of time. The word apocalypse simply means to reveal or to unveil. And apocalyptic literature, we hear in the readings for this weekend, coming to the last things, the end of the world, aren't simply a kind of fact that all things are ending, and indeed they are, but it is a kind of insight revealing a look behind the curtain at the ultimate destination of things, the ultimate resolution of everything. So for the early church, they did talk about and indeed expect that there would be a huge battle, a huge conflict. There would be travail and woe, suffering and chaos at the end of all things, and that might inspire fear in us. But at the same time, at the same time, they held it as a paradigm, as the shining example of what? Of hope that God would be victorious. And so in the church, developed then and with us still today, are the spirituality of the four last things. Death, judgments, heaven and hell. The final moment in which we die, our soul separates from our body, and we face God as judge. And then the ultimate destiny, that is, with God forever, or ultimately separated from him. And once again, this idea of apocalypse, looking behind the curtain to see indeed what is death, what is judgment, heaven and hell, helps us to do what? To live now, <laughs> apocalypse now. Not simply for the future, but by considering the future, we're able to live well now. In other words, there is a great spirituality of contemplating one's own death. The fact that all things are passing away, including ourselves. And the older we get, the more we feel like perhaps things are, don't work like they once used to work like. It's not as easy, uh, perhaps, physically or psychologically or spiritually even, to make good progress. Well, this lets us know that what? At the end, we need to be connected to the source of all life each and every day, that God as creator is the source of life, and without him we are nothing. Judgment. Sometimes we think judgment is a fearsome thing, and indeed we will be held accountable for every action, good or not so good, that we've done in our lives. And yet we know that God's judgment comes with what? Hmm. That sense of God as our creator. And the sense that what he creates, he wants to restore. He wants to give life. So his judgment is there in order to inspire us to receive his mercy, to be filled and be recreated, knowing the ill that we have done and embracing the good and embracing ultimately his restoration. Heaven and hell, once again, we think of these things as either rewards for good living or punishments for poor living. But in the early church, scenes of heaven and hell we're not scenes of simply God extrinsically saying, good, you've done a, a nice job in your life, come to heaven as a reward, or you failed, go to hell. Remember St. Matthew. What does St. Matthew say? Whatever you did to the least, you did it for me. There's a sense in which heaven and hell are decided right here on earth in the way we respond to love, to receiving God's blessing and being a blessing to others. 
in these final days of the liturgical year as we enter into winter and that season where things come to their natural conclusion, we have both a fear of end, but also a fascination. And the spirituality of those four last things, death, judgment, heaven, and hell, help us to live now with the great hope that love is Lord of all. God who has created the world will redeem the world, and he allows death to happen so that we might pass to his life. Let us then embrace the reality of the end. Let us come with striving and eagerness and a little bit of trepidation <laughs> to that fact that we will be held accountable, but let us ultimately unite ourselves to our loving God, because in the end, all things will be well. Amen. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it. Please like, subscribe, comment, interact with us. Together here at St. Dominic's, we want to continue to radiate the joy of the gospel in the heart of the city. Shine with the Lord's love. Amen? Amen.